good Sunday afternoon at this TV this cabin and I'm TV I'm back here it's gonna demonstrate uh, yesterday I noticed that I didn't get everything in the video and I'm not a real good uh, at doing videos in fact as you probably noticed sometimes I'd be talking and the video camera wasn't picking up out there in the yard it just don't pick up real good the volume on this thing don't turn up real good but it does all right on the internet usually unless the winds up two uh, sometimes I don't notice that I'm not sh demonstrating the knives uh, like I you know and stuff that I'm making as well as I could I just don't, didn't notice it yesterday <laughs> so I'm, like I say I've got to get a belt sander today and I'm going to be making a lot of these knives and I try to sell them in sets or pairs if uh, somebody wants to buy two like this and they want you know like this survival knife here they're, they're, they're $120 shipping handling and everything for two of them just like this real nice knives uh, they will be and I wanted to demonstrate tell you why I like using a machete for splitting wood over a tomahawk. The tomahawk is wide, so it's going to split a split it uh, all to pieces where it goes smooth whenever you are slicing with a flat edge blade like this. See how I was able to split out about an inch of wood, and it makes it easier to rasp down to what I want to fit the handles. For instance, like this in here, I haven't done any varnish work or anything to it other than just cut out the handles and put it on there on my knife. This is uh, the second knife off the forge. I made it, uh, on, I think, back in May. The first one I probably made in March, uh, but then I refinished it and gave it to my cousin. It was the one I, y'all might have seen my other video that had that PBC white handle on it. It's just a piece of uh, Schedule 40 white pipe that had been flattened out to fit it. But anyway, this one here is oak handles that I drilled out and uh, through the steel and I put these dowel pins in there and I didn't get this back one glued good so it'll probably come out on me at some point and when it does I'll have to redo that. But like uh, yesterday I was demonstrating some things I noticed I didn't get in the demonstration on when I was in the bush, when making knives out of steel, it usually wasn't even this heavy of steel that I would find. Sometimes it would be lighter weight than this. Sometimes it was just an aluminum or a tin can that I used for cutting, depending on what it was. And sometimes I used uh, stones from the creek and sharpened them flat edge stones. A, a shale will cut, cut the thunder out of you. Uh, but if you can get flint, that's better better for cutting, I think. Uh, it will break easy. All stones can break. But it gives you something to skin with if you don't have a knife. And sometimes, then you're on a, say you're on an airplane ride, for instance, and you crash in the jungles. Well, you know they ain't going to let us on board with no knives or nothing that we can use. They do that uh, to, to keep terrorists down, they think. That isn't my opinion, but anyway, the way I used to do this, on um, putting a handle on, I used a rope if I, you know, because you won't have time in the bush to mess around. If you've got rope or twine, or you can even take vine, small vine, and you wrap this handle just like this. You, now look, uh, let me get this straight. Huh? Get that loop in there. You're going to want a loop in here, and another thing you're not going to want. Uh, let me go ahead and undo this mess on this end of what I've done here. I'll just cut it off there again. But anyhow, these knives are fairly decent. They're fairly sharp. You can, as you see, it needs a little more work on that edge, but it, it did cut through the rope all right. It works tolerably. Now, so this will slide through without a knot. You don't want a knot on your string when you're going to wrap this. What I do, I lay this this loop here. Is what you want is a loop at one point, and I prefer it up here, so next to the handle usually. And then what we do is, well, I'm not doing that right. I did this yesterday. 
let's put it down this way and then we'll start down here and work to the back and then I'll pull the loop to the front that's what I want to do now here we go I'll get myself straightened out here in a minute now you see that when you put that loop down the side of your blade you hold it there you leave the pigtail sticking out and you come around tight as you can you come around again on this side of it tight as you can you keep going and you keep wrapping that tight side by side just like spiral on it right there right there because we want this as tight as we can get when we're making a handle and it won't look too bad but it ain't gonna be nothing fancy you know it ain't wood it's not the real stuff it's just a, something temporary to get by on now what you do is when you get down here at the end what we want to do we want to stick if I can get it here, we want to stick this th uh, thing uh, on the last wrap. Let me go around. Can't go around another time. No, I didn't give myself quite enough loop. I'll fix it. But this will go in here. Let me put this string in. There's usually not no knots in it, but this string here had a knot in because I had it tied for something else. But it's just for demonstration purposes anyway. Now what I'm going to do, you're going to pull this down tight. And usually, if it wasn't for that knot, it would pull right under there. But I left that knot on there because I'm not wanting to tie it on here. I'm just wanting to demonstrate. And then you can trim that off, whatever you want. And then you got you a neat little rope handle is what you would have right there. And you pull this back, and it, it, this right here back, to pull the loop through down this way underneath the other ropes and that holds itself. It's self-tightening lock is what that is. Now, uh, another, but saying how I don't want to self-tighten lock it here permanent, I was just showing you how you could do that and still have a decent knife. Now I pulled it a little tight. I may not get it off there very easy. But you can trim this rope off, see, when, when, if you was wanting to use that. You don't have to have that much pigtails I left out there either. So you see, it depends on how much handle you got, how much rope you want to wrap down there. And I could have done it a lot tighter than I did there, too. But I was doing this just strictly for demonstration. Now, I'm going to be lucky if I can get this back. I'm going to try to pull that loop back because I really cinched that loop good. Pretty good. Not as good as I could have. Now the loop's out. And then to untie it, if you need to rope off, you just pull that back out when you leave a knot there. Now if I hadn't left that knot there on this end it would have pulled under and then you'd probably had to cut it off most likely because you wouldn't be able to get that loop back. Once that loop pulls down under there it self locks itself and then you've got a handle on your blade. Of a sort. Not as good as wood, no, but it's uh, it's better than nothing. Any kind of twine will work, fishing line, this here just happened to be a heavy uh, hay bale twine that I have here on hand that I was demonstrating with. It goes on those big 1,500 pound bales, these big twines like this makes real good bowstring for shooting your, um, well at least well, it's good on uh, longbows, but not, not crossbows. Crossbows too, but not your, uh, not your compound bows, what I'm trying to say, not your modern bows. Your, your antique bowls you can get by with that kind of string for a string but you know your primitive bowls what I'm trying to say but anyway I noticed yesterday I wasn't demonstrating real good now now I'm y'all been able to see that rope trick so I redid redid that video on that part and there's some things that I catch myself every once in a while I can't see out in the sun when I'm outside whether I'm recording good so y'all bear with me like I say, I'm new at this. I'm not a very good photographer at all. I don't have any help. I work alone. I'm retired, disabled. Got a whole lot of issues. Take care of my mom. She's 76 years old. And not in good health, and I've got to take her a pop. She's a holler. But eventually, I'm going to make several knives, uh, the smaller ones to the bigger ones. This here is the biggest one I make at this time, besides the machetes. Uh, I'm making these here. If you can pick them up, you can come by and get one of these for 60 bucks. If you want your name on it, it'd be another five bucks. But they all will have uh, the year stamped 